So Thor Love and Thunder is in the midst of a 80% drop at the box office in its second week. And that's with not a lot of new competition. It's almost as if some of the positive word of mouth surrounding this movie isn't genuine. Who knew? Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So if you're new here, I do this series of videos on this channel called Film Criticism is Dead, where I talk about ridiculous Rotten Tomatoes reviews that show either a very clear bias or a complete lack of standards. And I don't think those two things are more obvious than in a movie like Thor Love and Thunder. A movie that I believe is one of the worst comic book movies ever created. Yet somehow, this movie has an astounding 68% from critics on the tomato meter. And an even more astounding 79% audience score. Uh, why? I still find it strange how we've had 10 plus years of MCU movies, and they very rarely drop below 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm sorry, but nobody is that perfect. And this again is what I'm talking about when I say overwhelmingly positive reviews come off as very unrealistic to me. Very phony. Especially when they're applied to mediocre or subpar movies. But let's dive into some of these reviews so we can see just how unrealistic they actually are. Jesus! Fucking Christ, it's about time! The first comes from Matthew Neckbeard Jackson at the Huntsville Item, who says, quote, It doesn't always succeed, but while it never quite lives up to the power of its predecessor, Thor's fourth solo outing does at least remind you why you love the guy in the first place. It makes you glad he stuck around this long. Whatever it is that you're offering, we're not into it. Don't care, couldn't care less. First of all, in my humble opinion, Ragnarok was not that hard to live up to. In fact, I would say that Love and Thunder is more of the same of what we got in Ragnarok, just maybe a little less focused. What Love and Thunder actually did was remind me that Marvel completely dropped the ball with this character. For me, an inconsistent story arc for an iconic character doesn't exactly make me yearn for more. James Luxford at the City AM, are these bots because they don't sound like real publications? He says, quote, ending on a sweet note, Thor Love and Thunder delivers visual spectacle fans will be hoping for, and in Portman, another fantastic female hero. However, all the hair metal in the galaxy can't disguise a franchise that has begun to repeat itself. Something very familiar about all this. Marvel getting repetitive? Nah. First of all, I don't know if shoddy CGI in the form of weird floating children heads is the visual spectacle that this person is making it out to be. Especially when you take into consideration the director of this movie has mocked it himself. And as far as Natalie Portman's Jane Foster goes, when are people going to realize that in order for you to have a real strong female character, you actually have to put in the legwork to create her? That makes sense giving us a glossed over version of Jane's story with minimal emotional depth and payoff is not doing her character justice. You actually did her character a disservice when you take into consideration this is the first time that some people were going to be exposed to her. Again, first impressions are everything and that's not how you sell an audience on a female version of Thor. The character just having cancer is not enough. You need to give us a reason to care about her. And it's kind of hard to do that when everything is treated as a joke. Have you ever heard of the healing power of laughter? <laughs> Leia Greenblatt at Entertainment Weekly says, More and more this cinematic universe feels simultaneously too big to fail and too wide to support the weight of its own endless machinations. None of it necessarily makes any more sense in Watiti's hands, but at least somebody is having fun. This is gonna be fucking fun! This is a reoccurring theme on Rotten Tomatoes if you actually scroll through some of the reviews, where someone sounds very negative about it, but somehow it still gets a positive score. It's almost as if this isn't a good gauge when judging the quality of movies. I agree that the MCU is too big to fail right now, and that is simultaneously its biggest problem. Because they don't have to put out high quality content anymore when people are basically programmed to watch it anyway. I'm having trouble. Having a loose cannon like Taka Waititi at the helm does not help this situation in the slightest. Especially if you're trying to build continuity in your shared universe. And as far as having fun, 
fun has become the go-to code word for critics when they're referring to something that lacks substance. They pretty much just use that word whenever they have nothing else important to say, because the product gives them nothing important to comment on. And they are subconsciously setting your expectations as the viewer very low so you don't think about what you're watching too much. Because if you do, you might notice some flaws. And we can't have that. Shut up. God forbid. God forbid. Don't talk like that. Clarice Laurie of The Independent said, said, quote, I can't remember the last time the A-list stars of a Marvel film have all seemed genuinely happy to be there. This kind of seems like an observation outside of the movie of the actors playing these characters, but if she is referring to the performances contained within the movie, then I'll say this. I would have a great time too if I was being paid to put in minimal effort and basically just goof around on set all day and take nothing seriously. <laughs> Whoopie fucking do. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. Believe it or not, there are actors out there who enjoy their craft and they enjoy telling stories and creating art and creating something that actually means something and is going to stand the test of time. And at some point in our society, we got it in our heads that something has to be lighthearted in order for us to enjoy it. As a movie lover, I find it much more enjoyable when the people involved in creating said movie actually give a shit about what they're doing. And if there's one thing that Taka Waititi has shown us about Thor Love and Thunder is that he doesn't give a fuck. Fuck you! <laughs> And finally, we have Bob Grimm of the Reno News and Review who says, I can't dislike a movie that features gigantic screaming goats. That's some in-depth analysis there, Bob. We are a long way removed from the days of Siskel and Ebert, aren't we? Because this is what it's about now, folks. This is the whole reason I actually started this channel, because I couldn't find an unbiased, realistic opinion to save my fucking life. Film criticism is no longer about having awesome conversations about things like story or character or direction, or cinematography, or score, or hell, even production design. No, because now people are easily entertained by gimmicks. You made me this color so that I may talk. Squirrel! As if screaming goats are the peak of their cinematic experience. It makes you wonder how these people got a platform that was big enough to justify their opinion being included on this site. And I think that says a lot about Rotten Tomatoes, as well as the state of modern film criticism. But lucky for all of you, there are people like me here on YouTube who will point you all in the right direction. Because we know that mainstream critics are no longer capable of doing that. Man, I'm tired of being right. Y'all be cool. Right on.